All right. Now, for anybody else who is still with me on this, um, with respect to what I've said, evolutionary speaking, evolutionarily speaking, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to buck the trend that has taken millions of years to to happen. Um, so I see that women are going to be smaller, men are going to be larger. Um, more intimidating. They're going to have less interest in their kid, whichever kid they have, um, because they can always go on and have more kids. Um, in my instance, you know, with respect to my father, my father had many more kids, many more children than any of the women that he had kids with. They all had a, a very small number of kids each but he himself had a lot of kids I don't know where the males that would have matched because you know there's approximately 50-50 in terms of men and women um, in the population so in order for my father to have had these children with these women there are some males out there who never had because most of these women or all of them only had my father as a mate so it means that there are many guys out there and I guess I fall into that as I don't have any kids um, who just did not reproduce at all whereas my father reproduced a lot and funny enough if I'm giving a little bit too much information um, my father didn't have any grandchildren. That's interesting. But, um, so if evolutionary speaking, evolutionarily speaking, we aren't going to see a change in the trends, um, what might happen millions and millions of years from now? Are women just going to just keep reducing in size? And I know I gave that very extreme example at the beginning where men in, in that species of fish, uh, the males, uh, eventually became embedded into um, the females. Is that, <laughs> I mean, it seems odd. I mean, we're not fish. Um, that, uh, and obviously, women can't disappear because at the very bottom of it, you need an ovary. You, you're not going to get any smaller than an ovary. Um, what am I saying, an ovary, a womb. So women are, are not, and women can't embed themselves in a guy. That would be dangerous for them. I'm sorry, I know this might seem incredibly weird, but I'm just going on a crazy trend, extrapolating to the craziest degree. But, yeah, obviously... Men, that is never really going to happen, that kind of, of um, combination of men and women. Um, and women do need to be of a certain size in order to, um, I would imagine, in order to help their kids to survive. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe we have, we've, we're at, and then there are some other laws with respect to nature that... Um, have evolved uh, or that people that I've come across for example they were saying that there are certain species of animals that are tournament species and what that means is um, for example with gorillas gorillas there's one male and a bunch of females or with respect to sea lions um, elephant seals for example is one big male and a, a harem of females um, in those species, you end up with a really, really big male who doesn't give a hoot about um, caring for individual kids. Like, you know, if, if the male is barreling down the beach and he runs over a couple of his kids, oh, well, what are you going to do? That's life. Um, and that's where the males are much bigger than the females. Um, I can't remember the opposite, the opposite of that, where... For example, where you have birds, there's some species of birds where you can't even tell the difference between the males and the females. 
um, they're the same size, uh, they don't have much difference. But amongst those species, uh, the men or the males pay a lot more interest to child rearing than the females do. Even to the extent where the females are, are uh, can end up just completely abandoning the males to rear the fe in the offspring completely. So it, it, you know, cheating. Whereas you might say what we think of as cheating and, and having a whole bunch of different mates, um, you can have a female who's like, okay, well. He is not, he doesn't have a harem, so he'll take care of the kids and I can just go off and find some other um, male. And in a way, the females can be males. They have, they expend a certain amount of energy with this male and they know that the male is going to take care of their offspring. So they're very likely to cheat more than the male is. Um, so that's interesting. But... Um, I think for us, and even if you look at bears, for bear, like a bear, a grizzly bear, for example, um, yeah, that kind of thing happens as well, where, you know, the male mates with the female, and the female is invested in raising her cubs, and if she finds a male, the male might, in, in the worst case scenario, kill her and her cubs, and it might be his cubs, as far as he knows. Um, that's so f how far removed it is um, in, in the case of, of that species. But for us, I don't think that we're ever going to get to the point where we're a harem species. Um, yes, of course, for certain emperors, that is a male dream to have a harem of women. Um, I like these Chinese emperors where they have how many hundreds of wives and hundreds of concubines and whatever else. But for most people, obviously, um, that is not the case. And as I mentioned in another video at some point, um, I think we're going to get back to that. I think that automation and fossil fuels have temporarily put us in the situation where that kind of an emperor and slavery thing has been, you know, it, it's turned off for a moment. But oil is not going to last for thousands of years, maybe hundreds at the most, especially as we use more and more of it. Um, but anyway, getting back to the evolution, evolution of us as a species and where equality goes, um, yeah, I'd, I'd really have no idea. And I was kind of hoping that I might pick up on something as I spoke about it, that I would find a path to move forward. But for most of us, um, I think a thousand years from now, two thousand, ten thousand, we're just going to pretty much be where we are because if we look at it, there doesn't seem to be a trend line in any other direction that we can point at. Um, human beings, we evolved in Africa maybe 200,000 to 250,000 years ago, let's say. Um, we, the records that we can find in terms of bones and so on is that we left Africa around 70,000 years ago. And in that 70,000 years, we have not seen a trend where the men are getting so much bigger and females are getting a different particular way. You know, if you look at a female from um, Native Americans or Amerindian um, compared to, uh, let's say, a European female, if you're not looking at their face, you're not going to see anything major that seems to be different. Yeah, the, the stature of people in, you know, Amerindians or Native Americans in, in the Americas are smaller, but I think that that had more to do about now, present day. I think in the past, 
there might not have been that great a, a difference in uh, the average height of people. I, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I guess this is where I'm going to end that. If anybody has any ideas as to where this can go, and as with respect to equality, I don't see things changing. Uh, I think that in the developed countries, um, we might see more women taking on certain jobs uh, where they have prominence and power and so on. But women are always, evolutionary speak, evolutionarily speaking, going to be more invested in their kids than, than guys are. Even in a species like ourselves that is not a tournament species, uh, we're midway, apparently. We're midway between tournament species, huge male, small female, um, doesn't care about the kids, and, you know, almost in the... Fr uh, you can't differentiate between male and female, and women just keep going off with different men. We're in between there. But um, I don't ever see it really that we're going to see... Uh, you know, these Amazon females. Hmm. But no, as a species, no, I don't, I don't see it happening. It, something really huge is going to have to happen. And I think that is another video that I wanted to talk about because we, we have this idea uh, in developed countries that, oh yeah, you know, Look how we treat women better, so much better than we treat them in non-developed countries. I don't think, I think it's, it's a veneer. I think that, for one thing, um, except for World War II, women in, in all these different countries had a very much the same position. You know? Um, they were not... I think so many men died that, and men, so many men were away fighting a war in World War II that women were able to leave the home to do more in society and they gained a marginal uh, amount of, well, it's not marginal. Obviously, women in, in certain countries, they don't, they're not even educated. Um, they might be, you know, covered I've covered up a lot. Um, they might be prevented from even divorcing their husbands and so on. Um, they might have to deal with a lot more abuse and so on. But I think that that is, is a blip, something that happened because of World War II and in many of these countries. And eventually things are going to settle back to where they were and, and continue to be on that evolutionarily evolutionary trend line um, I don't this is not something that I hope for and I know a lot of people if they end up hearing this they will ascribe it to me and think that this is me thinking that this is the right way that things should be it isn't it's just how I see that they're they happen to be going let's say for example um, I don't wish for an emperor of earth who is the supreme an unopposed leader of Earth and an end to democracy. That's not something I'm interested in. Um, I don't want slavery to return, but that's where I see things going in the distant future. So, but anyway, again, uh, wish me luck. You can like or unlike, comment, and uh, or subscribe or share. Thanks. Peace.